हंसती रहे हया की लाली खिलती रहे जोप के नीचे गर्दन पे सुबह शाम मिलती रहे हंसती रहे तू हंसती रहे हया की लाली खिलती रहे जोप के नीचे गर्दन पे सुबह शाम मिलती रहे हंसती रहे तू हंसती रहे हया की लाली खिलती रहे जोप के नीचे गर्दन पे सुबह शाम मिलती रहे हंसती रहे तू हंसती रहे हया की लाली खिलती रहे जोप के नीचे गर्दन पे सुबह शाम मिलती रहे I'm so astounded right now that I'm definitely going to use my notes, so apologies. <laughs> Thank you to each one of you for being here today. Um, I'd written this before, but after this weekend and knowing what has taken it, you all to get here is just completely overwhelming. Um, we are so grateful for our community who have shaped us as individuals and guided our relationship to witness and support our partnership today. When thinking about the ceremony, we thought a lot about what would be authentic to us. Um, and we realized that having the ceremony done in a communal way felt the most right. I have a scripted thing to say, but this is just very overwhelmingly beautiful. And it's just been incredible to see so many people just come together to be here with us. Let's apologize. Um, what Sylvian was saying about it just felt right to do the ceremony in a communal way. That can also come with a lot of vulnerability. While the public commitment brings its own weight, we did feel it was a tradition we wanted to partake in. And as we enter into a relationship, we, we give up control to some extent of how our lives will shape out. That relative uncertainty can be scary to enter into because it will bring about its own challenges. Now, it's not just the unknown challenges of one's own future, but the unknown challenges in one's partner's future as well, that we're adding on and when making the commitment. And so it can be powerful to have a community of people help guide and support us both in this moment and in the future. Uh, and so, we have asked those who have known us our whole lives to share with us various offerings and gifts for this moment. We don't know how things are going to go. We don't even fully know what our family has chosen to share with us today. <laughs> so you're in with us with, us, with this. Uh, we hope you all stay along for the ride with us in this silly yet very us experiment. We promise we originally intended for this to be like under 30 minutes, but of course, in us fashion, it doubled. So, if you need to, Stretch your legs, get up, doodle, do your thing. Definitely listen to your body, what you need to do. We know that you're here in love for us and that just means so much. I'm also seeing some empty benches, so if people want to sit,
please come in, walk out. There is no decorum here. There's just community and family. So you're welcome to make yourself comfortable. And so with all of that, we would love to start things off. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna start things off with our siblings. We literally have no idea what they're about to do, but they're supposed to be the older, more mature ones. So here goes. Come on up, Nikhil, Isabel, Olivia, and partners. Okay, I'm gonna introduce what we're doing. Um, so we are the siblings and partners. So when we were thinking of what to do, um, we, we thought of the idea of a camp song. So those of you who have been to camp or have seen a camp movie know that camp songs are so important to the experience of camp and they're often something that people will continue to sing um, for years to come when you run into someone that you were at camp with and um, the, the songs come back to you. So we will be singing a song, um, and when Nikhil raises his hand, we would love for you to join in the chorus with us. Um, you all have it on the QR code. And then um, we also will all be saying something uh, during, the, during the interim of uh, the song um, as Stefan plays uh, his music. And are we introducing ourselves or no? Okay, okay, we're not. <laughs> Nathan and Sylvian, we are a little new to the marriage game. Also, the truth is that no one really knows what they're doing in life and in marriage, but we wanted to share something that felt meaningful to us. Someone once told us that there are three sides of a marriage. You, your partner, and the marriage. Each of you has needs and wants, 
and it's important to meet them all. It can be helpful to think of the marriage as a third entity, kind of like a little ball of light. Nikhil and I are, as you know, very stubborn, opinionated people. We do not like to be told what to do. We do not like to lose an argument, and we know that you might be the same at times. Sometimes Hannah and I find ourselves working so hard to get what we want. More time to ourselves. Maybe this Friday night we get to watch my kind of movie. Maybe you could help with the laundry this week. Maybe even though we know you're a writer, you can take my suggestion in the speech, you know, the one that we're doing right now. Anyway, point is, to get our voice heard, to win our side of the argument. In these times, it's helpful for us to ask, is the marriage getting what it wants and needs? For example, we are out to dinner on one of our few precious and rare date nights these days, um, case in point, and have found ourselves in the middle of a hard-hitting argument. Nikhil wants me to concede, I want him to concede. The marriage, though, wants us to lean across the table, to kiss, to enjoy our chips and artichoke dip, to talk about the things we admire that each one of us has done recently, to be in awe of each other. And the truth is, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes our egos win, we pout, we look at our phones, maybe throw a few passive-aggressive statements across the table. But sometimes the marriage wins. We finish the artichoke dip, we reach for each other's hands, we kiss, we laugh. And the ball of light that is our marriage glows a little brighter. So we'll leave you with this, Nathan and Sylvian. On all of the days that are good, and all of the days that are hard, make sure you remember to try and make that ball of light that is your marriage a little, a little brighter. brighter. Know yourselves. What parts of this relationship come naturally? Lean into that knowledge. Know when the, going, when the going gets rough, and it will get rough, that you have those strengths to fall back on and bring you together. But also know where your strengths are not, and let that be a guide to those areas that need more attention, support, and care. And most of all, Rest in the deep knowledge that we will always be there for both of you. What we know is that we all need to be cherished for what we are and what we do and that it doesn't always come on its own but needs to be practiced daily. 
Cherishing has been a remedy for keeping our marriage healthy and strong. We wish that for yours. We are inviting Nathan's Cousins, organized by their fearless leader and poet Hannah, who you just met, um, to share a poem. For those of you who don't know, Hannah, my soon-to-be sister-in-law, is an incredible poet and her work has been so meaningful to me. Over the years, getting to know Hannah has added so much silliness and joy-crying sessions into my life, well, mostly just tears from one of us, <laughs> but she has truly become another sister to me. Nithin's cousins as well also have become more than just my partner's family. They all have been so open, welcoming, and loving towards me, so much so that I'm glad to call them not just family, but friends of mine in their own right. So please, come on up. Excited to hear what y'all have in store. <laughs> Hi everyone, we're Nitin and now Sylvian's also cousins. Uh, we are um, some of the best that this gene pool has to offer. Um, and Nitin is really the best of us. Nikhil, not so much, even though he thinks so. You're really at the end there. Anyway, so we're reading a poem. Um, it's really Hannah's work, um, which is wonderful to have in our life uh, as an offering today. So let's get started. Nisha. Um, so in addition to everybody that's standing up here, we are missing a couple of cousins, uh, Tony and Rachel, who just had a baby, and then uh, Jomon and Lindsay, who are expecting one very soon. Uh, so this is also from them. A poem for a wedding. <laughs> Everything we want to say sounds trite. Things like love and lasting, rings and marriage. Things like beautiful, perfect, divine. Even when we want to say that it seems like the trees are listening, the wind is singing along. It sounds maybe like we are forcing it. Even when we want to say the woods are witnesses, just as we are. Like the air around us is exhaling too as it does when humans are gentle and kind. When they, when they take care of the earth and each other. What can we say to two people who have decided that they will stay together, stand together, walk together through it all? That instead of running away, they are bringing us with them. They are making a family of us all. Not much except that we love you, all of us. And love, as the trees and the wind and woods and air would say, is often very much enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
can see all again. Thank you all again. So, I remember distinctly being welcomed so warmly by Olivia and Stefan the first time that I met them at their home in Germany. He immediately offered me a beer, Olivia a big tight hug, we went to the best food, and they were just so loving, even within 10 seconds of meeting me. It left an indelible mark on my own heart. Sylvian may not remember her first time meeting Olivia, but Olivia certainly does. She remembers welcoming Sylvian into the world the night she was born. Sylvian was delivered in her own house, and Olivia was right there to welcome her. And in the same way, Stefan has also known Sylvian now for the last 20 plus years. Having family spread out around the world has been something both Sylvian and I have grown up knowing. But somehow, it only makes the love and yearning to connect all the more powerful. It means so much to us that they're willing to gift us a, a song that Stefan composed and that Olivia and Stefan will, will now give to us. Thanks. no song about your wedding day but of every day to come may every day be one you'd like to stay but either way it has just begun so take a breath and then another one and when it's gone think of your song Nothing stays for long That yesterday is just a memory And tomorrow it's just a strong idea So take a breath And then another one And when it's gone Think of your song Everything begins thing or two what you want again causes you lots of pain remember your mind is what bothers you so take a breath and then another one and when it's gone think of your song
blessed Sylvian Nathan, every one of the family. Let every swift moment be a precious gift sent down to you by eternity. So take a breath and then another one. And when it's gone, think of your song. Everything begins. Everything begins today. For both of us, the traditions and wisdom of our parents and our cultures have truly shaped, nurtured, and at times, even challenged us. We were both so nervous when our parents were going to meet for the first time, just given how they have had such different journeys, experiences, and even outlooks in life sometimes, but it has been so beautiful to see our parents reach out to each other with such love and openness has been one of the truest depictions of their love for us to witness and to feel. Growing up, faith was such an integral part of how I was raised, and it continues to be an important part of life for many of my family members, including my mom. And so we would like to welcome up all of our parents now to come up and for my mom to begin by offering some words and a blessing. I'm standing here yet again after about two and a half years of our first son's wedding for our youngest one's wedding with more or less the same words, same speech. <laughs> <laughs> Which are, our boys and the partners they choose are not simple and easy. <laughs> they come to us with crazy ideas, <laughs> tell us they are not forcing us to do anything. <laughs> and request us just to be open to listen to them. Nitin knows literally how to twist my heart and make me believe that what I want is exactly what he had asked for. <laughs> Anyone who knows Nitin and Sylvia knows that they do not believe in organized religion, but on their hearts are etched the words love and service. That is their religion. They live it out by speaking out for the voiceless, the oppressed, the powerless, and the needy. There are times when I fear for their safety in the work they do. Nitin once reminded me that each of those mothers whose sons or daughters were being victimized also have the same concerns as mine. I realized then that I may not have the same level of involvement Nitin and Sylvian have but I decided never to get in the way of their work. I also realized that if God forbid, if ever someone in my family 
or friend circle was the was the one in need or support i would surely want someone like nitin or silvian on my side to help me with their selfless service i am happy to support and stand by nitin and silvian's decision to celebrate the wedding they want the way they want it to be and as part of it they have given me the freedom to bless their marriage the way i want to i grew up catholic and i believe in god his son jesus christ and the holy spirit i rely heavily on the holy spirit to guide me when i falter and doubt i sincerely believe that every person here is a beautiful creation of god and god accepts each one of you and all of us just the way we are i respect all of you here who have beliefs different from mine i would like to say a small prayer to bless their marriage if you are so inclined you can bow your heads and join with me or if not that's okay too father god you rule and reign from heaven above and are worthy of all our praise lord i ask you to bless this marriage with faith hope peace and love let each of us who have been placed in their lives be a blessing to them both grant peace and happiness to both families as they have been bound by love together thank you for all your many blessings and for allowing us to be part of this beautiful covenant today have your way in our lives lord in jesus name we ask these favors amen, amen. nitin and silvia i don't think i can give you any advice on marriage <laughs> in fact i have learned so much from both of you i remember the time when i was going to have my eye surgery silvian called me and asked me what i what i would like her to do for me when they came to support me that weekend she told me in her family when someone was sick they did what that pa- that person liked the most for them when she insisted i told her i like to have ginger tea when i feel tired <laughs> from that day on the moment she comes home she offers and makes ginger tea for me that's a kind of thoughtful loving care she gives to people around her i also remember nitin telling me a few months after he started dating silvian how shocked he was the way silvian's family handles disagreements <laughs> he told me that they never shout and scream at the top of their voices when they get angry <laughs> I said what do you mean <laughs> There is no family that does not have fights and disagreements We the the Paul family know how to do it well <laughs> The neighbors from 3 houses down would have heard and agreed or disagreed with our arguments when we fought Nathan told me that if Sylvian was upset with her parents or sisters, she would very gently say, "What you said hurt me," or something to that effect. <laughs> we were shocked too, <laughs> but we decided to change some of our ways, and the current version of the Paul family you see <laughs> is a much calmer, Sherman-influenced version. <laughs> about nitin i remember a time i had a major fight or disagreement with nitin and i got very upset i told him that i was leaving everyone and going somewhere to be on my own <laughs> and his reply was mama no matter what you say or do and whichever corner of the earth you go to i will come after you and find you <laughs> that sentence of his gives me so much comfort when i feel down I am known to share more than is warranted. <laughs> But like my daughter-in-law Hannah says, vulnerab- vulnerability can be a superpower. <laughs> In my not so young days, and when all my only my husband Joe was the earning member of the family, I had an unexpected pregnancy. Our family was divided as to what should be done. In one of my darkest moments, this boy told me that he would sacrifice his college dorm life not only to save money but to stay by my side at home to support me what more can i say he has taught me his mother so much about sacrificial love so i don't have any advice for either one of you 
but just blessings. You are everything that a parent could hope for. It makes my heart so happy to see how well you have chosen your partner. You and Sylvia together is everything I've dreamt of for you. To see your happiness when you're with Sylvia, how well your values and ideals are aligned and how open and loving your hearts and homes are to all around you makes my heart leap with joy. I add my blessings to this union. May your heads agree about the things that really matter and may your hearts be united in love and understanding always. As we were, I'm sorry. As we were preparing for this celebration, you several times mentioned how you hoped that through working together and playing games together, we would create new bonds between ourselves and thus enrich this community, which is so meaningful to you. So we decided the four of us a few months ago <laughs> to do our part and uh, to prepare something for you. Um, well, we had lots of fun doing it <laughs> through Zoom meetings, which were great. And uh, we created certainly uh, new bonds and joyful memories. Yes, for you, for that, we thank you. We chose to offer you a quote by James Baldwin on the meaning of relationship, what he sees as a deeper meaning of relationship, very well worth taking in and pondering. We'll try to do it that way. We don't hear it, we can start with okay. yeah. The longer I live, the more deeply I learn that love, whether we call it friendship, or family, or romance, <laughs> is the work of mirroring and magnifying each other's light. Gentle work. Steadfast work. Life-saving work. In those moments when life and shame and, and sorrow, sorrow occlude our own light from our view, but there is still a clear-eyed, loving person to beam it back. In our best moments, we, we are, are that, that person, person for one another. Lovely money. <laughs> I don't think it's raining anymore, so if you can put the umbrellas down, it just allows a little bit more visibility for people. Is it raining? Is it? Okay. Sorry, I hope everyone's okay with the sprinkle. Um, so, I would now like to invite up Gemma Anti, my father's sister, to guide us through some traditions from my home state of Kerala in India. Hi everyone. Namaskaram. Okay, okay. Nitin and Sylvian have decided to pay homage 
to traditional Kerala Christian wedding rituals during the ceremony, with some changes to reflect their own partnership, thereby honoring their own journeys within their cultures. The Minna and Mandragodi tradition has two parts. First is the Minugatta, which is basically the tying of the Minna. The Minna or Thali is the symbol of marriage in India, just as the ring is the symbol of marriage here. It is traditionally a pendant on a heart-shaped background that symbolizes the grounding of love and respect in their relationship. In the same spirit, Sylvian is gifting Nitin a ring she has made as her symbol of love and respect. <laughs> okay. So next is the gifting of Mantra Godi. Mantra Godi means blessed cloth. It is a symbol of the new life and of a promise of providing care and protection. To honor their partnership, they will both be draping a traditional Kerala sari and a mundu over each other to symbolize this. Okay, the lighting of the Nilavalaka, the traditional oil lamp of, from Kerala, is often used in Kerala weddings and can symbolize keeping the light alive for each other in their relationship. For Sylvian's family, spending time around a fire and singing songs has also been a long-standing and ongoing family tradition. As Andrew plays a song that the family grew up singing, Nitin, Sylvian, and their families will light the lamp as a blessing of light and love for their future.
Now, Nitin and Sylvian will share their vows. Me first. Whew. So, uh, a few weeks ago, I came up to Nithin, super stressed out, asking, oh my gosh, what do we do for our vows? Am I supposed to say, I'll never, ever, ever do anything that you don't like again? Is that how that works? He laughed for like about 10 minutes straight. I guess that's not how vows totally work. Um, but it did make me reflect uh, through what I would want to say in this moment and what committing to our relationship has meant and means now and all the ways that we have grown and I have grown and will continue to grow. So, Nithin, since meeting you, life has been brighter, deeper and more joyful. Not only do I feel so fully loved and accepted by you, but you have shown and encouraged me to more deeply love and accept myself just as I am. I see how when I can more fully love myself and be myself, this only expands further to our loved ones, our community, and expands tenfold. This moment is just one of many where I'm reminded of the beauty in this messy, silly, sometimes stressful life we have created together, of the dedication, openness, and generosity that is required of us to uphold, lift, and love one another. You know more than anyone that sometimes my best may feel like it falls short on days when I am tired, sad, or angry at how things are in this world. But you also know more than anyone that I will always do my utmost to show up and be with you, with us, in whatever moment, no matter what it looks like. So I don't know what is in store for you or for me or for us, but I am so grateful and excited to meet it together. I don't think there was any one moment where I suddenly felt so connected or suddenly knew that I wanted a shot at building a lifelong partnership with you. It was only when it was time to let go because our lives were in such different places and because we still had so many question marks about our own connection that to uproot from my community that, that gave me really so much, just as you were about to enter into an intense phase of life, well, it had actually never made more sense to let go. There was a clear break-off point right at our feet, just as we had planned when we first met. But then, that's when I could feel far away corners of my body and soul and mind fighting not to let go, to, to hold on, even if just for a bit longer. These were parts I had never was cognizant of existing before, and maybe somewhere my being could sense, even before it was in my consciousness, that we were both trying to head in the same direction in life. But more than that, that you were going to be my cornerstone jigsaw piece that, to me, truly starting to get to where I wanted to go. For me, I felt so full and satisfied with my community that partnership was not something I felt I needed, but more only to engage in if it meant growth. And if all the tiniest details aligned, but here's where life sometimes lovingly reminds you that you don't know shit. <laughs> Take that, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I must be speaking some truths. <laughs> for me, I felt that our partnership was not, not something I need to engage in if it only wanted to engage in it if it meant growth and if the tiniest details aligned. And as much as we've grown so much together in ways that help us strive towards our own values, which has been something I don't take for granted, the thing that has been absolutely the part that gets my heart ready to explode are those moments where you have gone upstairs to sleep early, because that's what you do, and I'm slowly sneaking up to not awaken you, only to suddenly hear you yelling, Bush me! One of our random love names that we say to each other in a really embarrassing gremlin voice. 
which we're only supposed to use in private and never ever disclose publicly because you're sitting up because you were watching Lord of the Rings instead of falling asleep before you shift. But now, hearing that, what that means to me is we get to hang out again just a little bit more. And I'm feeling like a little kid at a sleepover who just found his best friend is also awake. And we get to hang out again just a little bit more than we thought we could. I never knew to look for that when looking for partnership. I don't know what will happen in the future. I do know that we will fight to live up to our values, but I do hope I can always fight to protect our childish playfulness. Because when the world feels heavy or hard, I hear your gremlin voice, <laughs> see your scrunched up face making silly expressions, and I remember joy, or at least I feel it in those corners of my body and soul and mind, and I feel it fighting not just to not let go, but wanting to hold on. I love you and you make me feel seen and I hope I can do that for you through whatever life throws at us. So we said um, vulnerability, so what y'all think? <laughs> Nathan, Sylvian, look at your uh, good luck rainbow.